Hello guys, welcome to another very smart video, and today we're going to talk about history, which um, I admit we haven't done for a very long time. Uh, but we're going to skip all the way from, you know, the Julius Caesar's invasions to the Wars of the Roses. And as you can see in the picture below. So, I actually say it's a very complicated topic, the Wars of the Roses. And it has very complicated relations, it takes a very long time to study and understand it, it the whole thing of it. So this video is going to last quite long, I, I probably would say. And as we go through the timeline, facts, and wars of the Wars of the Roses. So before we talk about anything of the war, we must talk about the Hundred Years' War, which is a war waging from England to France. I admit I cannot like tell everything about it. I haven't talked about the Hundred Years' War before, but well, it's just a big war for a very long time raging between England and France. So. Though this has been going on for a very long time. Then let's meet Edward III. Uh, he was very rich and he made his sons very big landowners. So he was a king, of course. And then one of his sons, called the Black Prince, went to, fought in the Hundred Years' War and actually conquered pretty much of French territory, like more than a half of what now is France. And then his son was Richard II. And Richard II was not such a popular or good ruler, so you can see, because there were, he had lots of uh, bad things in front of him. For for example, there were the Peasant re Revolt in 1381, you know the pe Peasant's Revolt, like the peasants fighting against the king, thinking that the king sh shouldn't have done this, etc. And there also was a parliamentary crisis during 1386 to 1388. And so Richard II was in very much trouble with Parliament and the people. And then his marriage with Valois, the French princess, just to have a good relationship with France, also made him very unpopular. So Richard II, people didn't like him. And in 1399, Richard II went to Ireland. And then Henry, let's meet Henry, a guy, he returned to England and dethroned Richard. Henry then became Henry the Fourth. Became Henry the Fourth. So, uh, Richard's son, Edmund. His mother was bypassed, and then there were many rebellions for Henry the Fourth. Then Henry IV died, and then Henry the Fifth, who is very talented, his son. He won at Agincourt versus the French, and then got really much of the French land, like, got more, got uh, added to the land the Black Prince got. So it's actually literally half of the French land, so it's good. That's a good thing. And then he marries a French princess, and, his, and their descendants will probably, mostly, will inherit the French throne. And Henry V died. His son was called Henry the Sixth, but he was only one year old when he was um, he was the king. So, well, he had lots of uncles which took charge or called the Lord Protector. And because he was new king, and even when he grew older, he was easily persuaded, and his actions were mostly leaded by the Lord. So, one of his uncles was called John, and John was supposed to uh, be in charge of France. However. John did try his best to get the land, keep the land in control, but they lost nearly all the land except the small part in Calais, and they literally lost all the land that the Black Prince and uh, Henry the Fifth had conquered. And then he returned to England and died. Then there was a peace treaty, but the conditions were very bad. Like uh, people of England didn't like it. So there were many protests at that time, but, well, the people were in prison. Henry's other uncle was called Humphrey, and Humphrey was in charge in England. At this time, uh, Henry VI was still quite young, and his main support, the main people supporting him, were his advisors. For example, there was this guy called Richard, 
and there was also a guy called Edmund of, Ed, Edmund of Somerset and William. Actually, at that time, Edward and uh, sorry, Edmund and William had actually more influence than Richard, and they literally got Richard exiled. But then Richard returned and exiled Edmund, put them in jail, and and then William got killed. Edmund returned, and they were actually two main opposing advisory teams for the king, Henry the Sixth. So at that time, there were very two very big families, the Nevilles and the Percys. It's funny because they relate to Harry Potter things, but I guarantee they have nothing to do with the Harry Potter series. Let's forget that. So there are two main families which are opposing each other: the Nevilles and the per- Percys. And the rich and Richard actually supported Neville, and well, so William, sorry, William died. Edmund supported the Percys, and then in. We can also see a other person who has a very huge influence on the queen, Edmund Margaret, who is the queen, and the queen actually has the highest influence on the king. Returning back to the end of the Hundred Years' War, they actually lost. They literally pretty lost most of the lands. They didn't lose the war at this point in fourteen fifty three. They lost mo- most lands, and the king was so in shock. The king Henry the Sixth was in mental breakdown. And in fourteen fifty five, the king actually recovered, but was influenced by the queen. So the king is probably、mm, controlled by the queen, the ne ne the Richard Richard and Edmund etc. So the king is actually quite controlled, and、mm, it makes him look like a puppet. And at this time, there were two families out: the Lancasters and the Yorks, as you can see in the Wars of the Roses. The Lancasters is obviously the Neville family, and Richard, the Yorks, Edmund, and Percy, Percy family. Sorry. So. So, at this point. The war actually started. The Wars of the Roses started. So, the first war, is the War of Saint Albans. It's not called the War of Saint Albans. It's like the them fighting at the Saint Albans. So. Henry was actually siding with the Lancasters. He didn't side. He's probably like part of the Lancasters. So they were still fighting the Yorks. The York army had Richard, Sir Salisbury, and a guy called Warwick. The they chose to fight at Saint Albans because Henry knew he would not. Henry the Sixth, not very popular, knew he wouldn't get any support in London, so he moved up to a northeastern town. So、uh, they were fighting. There were like two thousand men versus five hundred men. So the Lancasters were actually pretty outnumbered, and then the Yorks started attacking. However, the Lancasters didn't let them get the other upper hand and pushed them back quite well off the main street. Then there was this general Warwick, actually, got in undetected, swooped to the back of the king's army, fought back, and then they literally killed many people, won the battle. Boom, the Yorks were in charge. So Henry the Fifth tried to add good relationships between the Lancasters and the Yorks because Henry the Fifth actually didn't want the battle. But、uh, there was too much suspicion, and he failed. So the Lancasters were in the west of the country, probably near Wales, trying to fight against the Yorks. And the Yorks was like, "Well, we're in charge now, ha ha." But the Yorks one did have the king at that time. Yep. So, and they actually got the king into the jail, but they can't. They、uh, Henry the Sixth into jail, but actually they can't、uh, make themselves king. So Richard of York. Was now the Lord Protector. He couldn't make himself king because of the, um,、uh, because of the support. The people didn't want him to be king. So, well, the next battle we're talking about in the is the Battle of Ludford Bridge, fourteen fifty nine. The Lancasters actually won this war. So, the Yorks made the Yorks actually flee to Calais in Ireland. So I'm not talking about the details of this war, but yeah, it's just like that. But then the Yorks returned the next year, 
And then they imprisoned the king again, winning the king's forces at Northampton. But Richard was still not king. He was the Lord Protector. And then the Queen and the Lancasters fled north. So that was mm, the end of some of these wars. So Yorks, the Yorks literally were like winning the Lancasters. They lost, but they actually fought back, so they were very good at this. Well, did you think the Yorks would win? Mm, probably not. That we haven't even got to half. The Queen was actually secretly gathering support in the north. And there was a the, this battle of Wakefield, and the Lancasters won. The Lancasters won. They defeated Warwick's army, which was didn't have much support. And well, they got most of the Sundale Castle. They actually was like the thing was like this: the Yorks were in Sundale Castle, outnumbered, but. Uh, at first the Yorks didn't want to come out. They just beige the castle, were, were in the castle the whole time, so no problem with that. But then there was somehow somebody who tempted, or the king, or, or the general himself, who took all of his forces out of the castle, and then lost the battle because of some ambushing men. So they actually lost the this battle quite pretty well. And then there's the Battle of Towton. It is also known, considered as the, uh, as the bloodiest battle in history, because loads of people died. It was also New York. So actually, the um, Lancasters had a high ground advantage. They were higher. They their land was higher than the Yorks. So they had pretty much. Many advantage. It was fog, fog at that time, and the artillery of the Yorks couldn't be used very well. However, and then also the Yorks won the archers, but then were fought back, and there were the like Lancasters went all to the hill. It, it seemed like the Yorks were going to lose, but then they charged forward. Kill the and defeat the Lancastrians for some very mm, good reason. So Henry the Sixth and Margaret went to Scotland, and Warwick took the whole of England. Uh, so they also wanted to get rid of the whole of uh Henry the Sixth and Margaret. So you know what? They sent the treaty to the Scots, and the Scots agreed to fight the. Uh, Margaret and King Henry the Sixth. So, well, this is the good news. So the Lancasters and Somerset and the Percy family fought back, uh, but they were delayed. They were miraculously delayed by Neville and uh, Warwick. Sorry, it's uh, Lancasters. Wait, it yes, uh, the Lancasters and Neville fought back, but they were delayed by Somerset, Percy, and Warwick. Sorry. And then Margaret fled, and Henry the Sixth was captured. So the fighting back didn't really work. Henry the Sixth was captured after all. Yep. So the Warwick had more power, and the Yorks were literally in charge at this time. So, well, good news for the Yorks. So Warwick had more power, and they negotiated with the French King Louis. Uh. So, but the uh, French King didn't agree. And at this time, Edward married a lower-class noble and had a treaty with Burgundy. And that didn't go well with the people, although they actually liked Edward. And then some big thing happened. Warwick, who had been a very big supporter to Edward and the Yorks, rebelled. And other rebels by come also joined him by passing, and they were originally reaching London, they were joining together, and they were attacking the reinforcements for York at Edgware, Edge, Edgware Moor, yep, Edgware Moor, and Edward IV was miraculously captured. But, the thing is, we can see that Edward actually gained lots of support, and the people liked him. So, Warwick could not be crowned king! And he released Edward. And then he rebelled again. 
But at the Battle of Loose Cold Field, Edward the Fourth Army defeated all the rebels, and Warwick fled. Then there were two rebels, and Edward the Fourth was forced to leave London at that time, and Henry the Sixth was recrowned. And but then Edward got more enforcements, and then they actually marched back to London, and they got into the city. Somerset said, fled. And Henry VI was captured yet again. So the funny thing I would like to comment is that the king gets captured, but the king never gets killed. Very amusing. So, the Yorks won the battle. The, on the right side, they actually pushed the lines back, so yeah, they won. Somerset joined Margaret in Dorset. And they moved to Wales. And added forces was this guy called Jasper Tudor. Uh, he will be very important later. And they actually tried to fool the king. You know, Henry IV. They actually tried to fool the king. But uh, mm, I can say... Sorry, it's Edward IV. Yeah, sorry. Edward IV. They tried to fool Edward IV. But um, the king was very smart. They failed. And then the king tried to stop them from going and cutting into England. And they were forced to fight. At that time, the Lancaster leaders were mm, mostly losing. However, they fought back. And, well, the result was that Somerset and Edward were captured the Yorks, and Margaret was captured too. Sorry, Somerset and, uh, Somerset and Henry were killed, uh, Margaret captured, sorry about that. So actually the Battle of Tewsbury was successful to the Yorks. And so the, at that time, most of the Lancaster leaders lost. And then the guy called Thomas Neville rebelled in Kent, with like 15,000 people, and he failed. And as I said before, Henry died, Henry VI died, after capturing, and the Thomas and the North Rebellion, the Rebellion in the North, they surrendered. And actually, the last challenger for all the Yorks will be Henry Tudor and his father Jasper Tudor, and the big armed army of Brittany. So, actually, they're doing good. And then England and Burgundy make a treaty. But at that time, the king, Richard, and George, did the uh, relationship between them was tense. George was killed due to treason, and Richard went north. Richard got the northern lands and moved on. And then Edward IV died. His son, Edward V, was a new king. But then he was arrested, and, the, and Richard, who was in the north lands, known as Richard III, became the king. And then a guy called Buckingham rebelled. And however, Henry Tudor dude went to Brittany, you know, after losing the battle losing the battle of Tewsbury. So he went to Brittany. But and French. Yeah, France, later France. After uh, England and Britain Brittany's uh uh alliance, so he he so he fled to France. The thing was he could not return and join Buckingham's forces. And Henry actually... So Henry Tudor couldn't do anything, so he escapes back to France. And Brittany's king, as I said before, actually falls. So, well, the Brittany's king actually supporting him, but the Brittany lords were loyal to England, so he probably ran away, Henry Tudor. And then in 1485, nearing the end of the war, Henry arrived at Pembroke in Wales and entered Shrewsbury in Wales. And then at the Battle of Bosworth, and that's the photograph here of Britannica, Henry Tudor and Richard, they fought in Leicester. And in the Battle of Bosworth, the Tudors won. 
the orcs lost, and the orcs had to flee all the way to north. And Henry Tudor miraculously won the orcs and became king. So the orcs actually went up to York and Wales, and they tried to rebel from York and Wales, but they failed terribly. There were more rebellions after fourteen eighty six, but they all failed, every single one of them. And then they all ran away.、Uh, the Yorks escaped and fled to Britain. Sorry, not Britain, like the country eastern of France. And then there was this guy called Thomas David, and they and they hired lots of German soldiers, and they had an idea to become the of course Warwick. And Edward the Sixth, and they will get a lot of support, and they will be able. So Charlie and Tudor, well, they thought it was a good idea. So they went to Ireland and then Wales to get the support of the people, as fake people. They they were fake, and then they got lots of support, and their army actually outnumbered the army of the Tudors. They went to Furness. They went to Lancaster. They went to Shrewsbury. And they went to Yorkston, down, and fought at Com. Edward Tudor actually went to Coventry, but had to retreat. And then they fought the Battle of Southwell. At that time, the York's York army was actually attacking, and they were actually pushing back their royal army. But then the royal army sent a letter to the king, and the king fought back miraculously, pushed back all the. Yorks and won the battle. All the York remaining forces died, and then guess what? The Tudors won. So Tudors won the war, the whole war, and then they kept on ruling England for the next one hundred years. End of the story. You may want to ask the question, but it's very the easy question: Who won the war? As you can see, the Tudors were actually support of the Lancasters. So you could say that the Lancasters won. However, the Lancasters and the Tudors,、mm, they aren't very closely related. So I'd say the Lancasters and the Yorks both lost, and the Tudors, which are whom are related to the Lancasters, won the battle. So、uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. Sorry it was a bit long, and we'll see you next time.